Well, hello, gang. This is Kurt Frankenberg, uh, your host, and uh, I'm joined by my super cool, good-looking co-host, Mr. Mike Chupka. How's it going, Mike? Wow, things are going pretty good, Kurt. Getting a, a day closer to expiration there, so a lot of activity and uh, management of positions, adjusting of positions, and uh, small lament on one or two positions as well. So, <laughs> Happy day. I'm, uh, I happen to be in a position right now that's just about bulletproof, and I think it's going to be before um, before the 30th when they're going to have an earnings announcement. So, okay. Uh, I'll let folks know uh, how that goes on the blog. So uh, anyway, well, uh, folks, uh, I'm really excited to see you, and, and uh, today, as promised, we're going to be showing uh, some um, – some really interesting stuff. I'll, I'll be showing uh, some riskless spread trades. And um, I'm going to ask you all uh, to get the most out of today's free webinar. I'm going to ask you to um, uh, jot down your questions as you think of them. And if the question gets answered by way of the, you know, the class itself, then uh, great. <laughs> you'll, you'll have your answer. It will be cemented in your mind, and, and, uh, and that will be uh, just super. And if the question is not answered by the class itself, uh, why then we're going to have a couple of uh, breaks, a couple of places where we'll stop and and uh, and ask, uh, you know, uh, allow you to ask questions, and then Mike and I can uh, respond. Uh, and it just just that'll be the most efficient way to do that. Okay. So um, very good. Okay, uh, Mike, uh, let's do a warm up poll here real quick. Like I just wanted to uh, welcome everybody to the. To today's webinar, and uh, would like to know what kind of options trading you're currently doing. Okay, what kind of options trading are you in now? Uh, including uh, maybe you're not even trading options at all. Uh, you can vote more than one of these. If you happen to be doing covered calls and also spread trades, or if you happen to be doing long calls and puts and also covered call, um, then uh, go ahead and let us know and and. Um, Get a good representation. So far, Mike, I haven't seen anybody say that they're not trading options at all. <clears throat> Which uh, that's a change from Tuesday. Tuesday we had 14% of the audience. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, very good. Thanks for the participation, by the way, gang. I, I see everybody jumping in there. I sure appreciate it. All right. <clears throat> we're going to have a total, I think, of six polls, and uh, and we're going to have a few breaks for questions, and we're going to try and fit it all in an hour or in five minutes. <laughs> that sounds a little ambitious, doesn't it, Mike? <laughs> well, it's a possibility, right. but we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Very good. Okay. All right. Uh, because I like round numbers or, or because I like uh, multiples of the five, I'm going to close it right there when I saw, I saw multiples of the five there. And... Uh, uh, anyway, that's a little bit before the full minute was elapsed, but 55%, uh, more than half, are doing cover calls or uh, or naked puts, which, which is the parity trade to that. 45% uh, are doing long calls and puts, 55% doing uh, spread trades, okay, combination trades. And nobody today, nobody said that they are not training options. Now, not everybody in the room got a chance to vote, but uh, this sure – is a different crowd than Tuesday when, when we had 14% uh, saying, hey, I'm, I'm not trading options at all. So, okay, that tells me a little bit about what kind of pace we can do, huh, Mike? It does, yeah. We've got a sophisticated audience here, sir, so that looks uh, pretty good for us, and uh, we'll be able to, you'll yeah. be able to pace it accordingly. Good. Uh, Mike, is there a recording of this going to be available on the RedactiveTrading.com site? I am recording this webinar. Uh, it's Yay. recording right okay, now. Good. So, uh, so here's, yeah, I can post yeah, that uh, probably by 5 p.m. this afternoon, sir. Oh, that's great. Okay, so folks, listen. Uh, I'm going to go along at a pretty fast clip. And <clears throat> if you want to, uh, if, if anything escapes your notice or anything is like, hey, you know, can I see that again? Uh, you know what? Yeah, you can. <laughs> We're going to make this uh, recording available for free. A lot of times we, we charge for uh, recorded materials, but we're going to make this one available for free. It will be available sometime tonight. So <clears throat> so if, you, if there's any um, an example that seems to go a little too, too quick for you, let me know. Uh, let's see here. We've got uh, the, the um, back story for me, Mike. <laughs> let me give that just real fast. Uh, guys, uh, like many of you, I went to a uh, seminar to learn how to trade covered calls, and that was my introduction to um, to options trading. 
at that same seminar, I also learned about calendar spreads and bear call spreads, bull put spreads, you know, credit spreads mainly, um, along with you know cover calls trading and and uh, and calendar calls, you know, buying a call that's far out in time and then selling near term calls against. And uh, they covered all that in one weekend, and so I came out being a total genius. Did you buy that, Mike? Well, that's what they uh, tell you is going to happen, and uh, that's where uh, a lot of people do get into trouble, and unfortunately, that's did what happened to you, Kurt. Right. Yeah, just by following directions, I managed to clean out my entire life savings. Uh, and, and the reason is that nobody taught me about how to manage the downside risk, how to, how to do adjustments, uh, how, to, how to stay out of trouble. And uh, <clears throat> what I did, Mike, instead of blaming... Um, others, you know, instead of blaming my guru or blaming the market or blaming the people that were on the other side of that trade that, that made out like a bandit, what I did do is I blamed myself and I said, okay, Kurt, if it was your behavior that got you into trouble, how about reversing that behavior and see how that does for you? <laughs> and so, uh, Mike, uh, instead of hedging my stock by selling calls against, which is what I had done, I decided, you know what? Uh, what if I were to buy a put instead for insurance? Instead of agreeing to take a small amount if, the, the, if I'm right about a stock, how about I insure myself <clears throat> against a big loss in case I'm wrong? That's something I failed to do before. And uh, at the same time, leave the upside open. So that's what I did was, was I began to do that. Also, if I'm going to buy a put option, Mike, when when you uh, when you go to shop for an insurance policy, you know, on uh, homeowners insurance or for your car, for example, you probably are looking for deals, right? Well, sure. I might find a deal with my car insurance, for example, where if I pay month by month, they'll charge me a hundred dollars. So over the course of the year, I'll pay twelve hundred dollars. But they'll say to me, "Hey, if you want to pay six months at a time, we'll just charge you five fifty every six months." So now my yearly fee comes out to 1100 and if I want to pay the whole year up front, they might give me a bigger discount and only charge me $1,000, uh, so I get a right. bigger break that way. Right, right. So, uh, you know, the, the reverse of that was, <clears throat> you know, with the cover calls trading, they, they would say, hey, you know, if, if you could get 50 cents for selling a call that's a month out, but you could get a dollar for selling a call that's four months out, that might seem like you're getting uh, twice the premium, but really, you're you're uh, taking twice the premium, but spreading it out over four months' time. So you're not making as much. You know, you're not making as much per month. And I thought, well, wait a minute, let me reverse that. If I'm going to buy a put option that's a month away, or buy a put option that's four, or ten, or fifteen months away, maybe it costs more, but it costs less per month. So that was the next idea was uh, buy my option, my put option, far out in time. And then uh, as far as uh, selling covered calls, you know what? I, I hadn't been totally broken of that yet. <laughs> I decided, you know what, I, I want to still sell covered calls. And then what happened was I, I learned uh, that uh, not only was that idea already in practice, it's, it's called a collar trade. Not only was that idea uh, already in practice, but <clears throat> hedge fund managers and, and, and other, uh, you know, Chicago floor traders, you know, folks that are, are very savvy with options, they are already doing this and they're doing combinations that were much more complex than simply selling a covered call. Uh, but, uh, uh, Mike, I, I began to learn those things and, and pick them up and, and also come up with a few on my own. And uh, the one of the last things I wanted to make sure I didn't do was uh, didn't borrow money to trade anymore. You know, when you use margin, essentially what you're doing is you're borrowing money to trade. And I, I said, okay, I'm, I'm not going <clears> to <throat> I'm not going to gamble money that's lent to me and end up on the hook anymore. And what that turned into, uh, if you look at this fabulous contraption here, Mike, this is a uh, uh, Oh gosh, I forget what they call this thing, <laughs> but it's a uh, it's a protective device on either side of the trampoline. You've got these uh, uh, towers going up about 20 feet, and then these gimbals and straps and everything that holds the the jumper in. Uh, as you see, that jumper there is getting some pretty good height, 
uh, but he's not going to get hurt even if he turns his head towards the ground and forgets to flip the rest of the way. Uh, he's held in place. And Mike, I actually got on one of these things one time and, and found that my body was capable of doing triple backflips. Now this, this was about 20 years ago, but, but I could do it. I could do triple backflips and, uh, and land and then do a double front flip. Whereas if, if I was doing uh, you know, the same thing on a, a regular trampoline, I'd probably break my neck. You know, if I was to do it on a trampoline without the protection, uh, just a single backflip uh, was intimidating. So taking fear out of the picture kind of releases the high performance within. You know? And so uh, I began to trade this way. This was back in um, uh, early or I'm sorry, late 2001, where I came up with these ideas and started paper trading them. And I finally had put together enough capital to get into this play, October 1st, 2002. And I began a blog where I was showing this stuff on, on, uh, online in real time. You know, as I would make the trade, I would, I would document everything and folks should look over my shoulder. And Here's the deal. <clears throat> my first play, I got into Amazon, just 100 shares at 1609. And that's not a misprint there. I, I got into a uh, January 2005 $20 put option, way, way far out in time. Now, that looks like a lot to pay for insurance, doesn't it? Really expensive. I mean, you're paying at least 50% uh, of the underlying stock price right now, uh, adding that to your position, Kurt. Right. And uh, let me just say that you know this was my first play with real money, and I wanted to be really, um, really protective here. Uh, and so, yeah, I did buy something that was deep in the money, deep, deep in the money. And uh, I, I didn't understand the things that I understand now about where the ideal buy point is, okay? Uh, but uh, here's the deal. That 890 does look expensive, but in fact, I'm guaranteed much of it back. In fact, most of it back. And here's why. The, the, uh, at, uh, the sum of the stock's price plus the put option equals twenty four ninety nine. But I've got, because of it's a $20 put, I've got a guarantee that I can get out of that stock at $20, no matter what, for the next two years and a couple of months. So the amount that's at risk is not this eight ninety; dollars It's only the four ninety nine. Do you see that, how I'm guaranteed to get at least $4, or about $4 of that eight ninety back? That's right, yeah, because you're guaranteed to get back 20 no matter what happens next. So you're only risking 499. <clears throat> right. Now, now here's how that turned out. Okay. Uh, here at the bottom left, I picked up the shares of Amazon at 1609, and over the next 13 months, it about quadrupled. <laughs> it actually it quadrupled, and then it came down to uh, a little bit better than triple. Okay, so that's uh, that's pretty cool. But you know, another thing too is that there was still at this point there was more than a year left in the trade, and in the in between time, Mike, could I be writing cover calls to uh, chop down the price of that put? Could I be doing other plays that now you're familiar with? Well, yes, and right now there are 11 different ways that you could have adjusted this position over time. Even in some of the times in the pullback, you could use different techniques. Uh, to further reposition uh, your married put position um, at the time, you know, get a lower break even. But yeah, there's there's plenty of ways to even generate income, Kurt, and leave the upside open. And we're going to discuss one of those ways uh, later on. That's right. We sure are. We're going to show how how it's possible to generate income and still leave your upside open, kind of the reverse of a covered call. Mm -hmm. So, Mike, we already did this poll here. Uh, where we asked what kind of options tr uh, trading strategies folks are doing now. And, and since that happened, about 14 or 15 uh, new people walked in the room. So, uh, so this isn't going to be completely accurate. But um, let's do this, okay? Let's, let's ask the next pretty obvious question. Uh, how happy are you with your trading after, after uh, doing those types of things? Now, I don't want you to participate in this poll unless you've been trading for at least 12 months, okay? But looking back over the last 12 months, if you've been consistently trading for the last year, uh, how happy are you? Or are you happy? <clears throat> and rather than a straight up yes or no, I'd, I'd like for you to uh, answer somewhere along this spectrum here. Either, you know, very, very happy, that first one, or, yeah, you know, kind of, kind of happy. Or, you know, I got mixed emotions. <laughs> I see potential, but, uh, yeah, something's going wrong here. I'm not doing well. 
or man, I lost money last year and it hurt. Okay, ouch, I lost money last year, or wow, I'm ready to quit just to stop the hemorrhaging. Okay, so so the the range here is uh, very very good to very very bad, and I'm still seeing folks coming in. So thanks guys for for your high participation level today. That's marvelous. I'm gonna leave the poll up for another five seconds. If you haven't had your voice heard, uh, please make it known now. And three, two, one. Let's close it. Okay. Mike, here are the results from today. Uh, what is today? October 18th? It's October 18th, sir. Oh, geez. I better know it's October 18th. It's my anniversary. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So, so here it is. It's October 18th, 2012. And we've got 7% saying, man, I am absolutely kicking butt and taking names. I'm very happy with my trading. Good deal. 30% uh, next scale down saying, well, you know, I'm ahead. You know, I'm making money. Not enough money, but I'm making money. The remainder of our uh, guests today, the remainder of our class, is saying one point or another, not happy with their trading. We've got 33% with mixed emotions, 15% saying, ouch, you know, it, not only did I lose money, but I lost enough for it to hurt. And 15% are ready to quit. That's more than twice the number of folks that are very happy with their trading. That concerns me. Mike, uh, do you think that we can help folks here in all five categories? Oh, absolutely, Kurt. I believe uh, it's very easy to do with what we have to share yes. with them. Yes. <laughs> well, the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, why folks lose in the market in the first place, why they lose in the first place. Okay. Now, this is a true story. Uh, a legendary trading coach named Ralph Vince took 40 PhDs. Okay, 40 very bright people and gave them a virtual $1,000 to play in a game where they were guaranteed to win 60 times out of 100. They're guaranteed to win 60 times out of 100. Now, Mike, would you like to be given a game like that? Oh, yeah, I think that would be a, a good thing to do. I do that very often. Uh yeah. <laughs> if if I had a game like that to play, you know, where I was guaranteed to win 60 times out of 100 and it was uh, even money return, for example, you know, you bet a dollar and you, if you're right, you win a dollar. If you bet a dollar and you lose, you lose a dollar. But you're going to win more often than you lose. Well, hey, uh, that sounds good except for this. Mike, the only variable in this whole equation, we had very smart people, okay? We had uh, a game that's 100 tries long. We know that we're going to win 60 times. We're just not allowed to keep track of, you know, uh, how many. That'd be like counting cards, you know. They can do that. But we're going to make uh, even money return. The only variable was free reign as to how much to bet. Now, how well do you think these folks did? Well, do you think it would reflect, do you think it would reflect uh, the folks that are here on the line today? I don't know, but uh, what we do know is that uh, it looks like everyone should win with this setup. How could you lose? But we know that's not the case, right, Kurt? Right. <clears throat> Out of the 40 PhDs, 38 lost money. 38 of them had less than $1,000 at the end. That's 95% of the people. Okay, so, uh, so I would actually say that uh, according to our poll here, uh, the folks that are on the line are sharper, <laughs> mm -hmm. or or they're doing better. They're, they're they're learning here. Okay, now remember this was their very first try, but still, uh, that's uh, kind of interesting. You know, you you got some very very bright people, and they are given a winning game, and only five percent of them can actually win it. How about that? Okay. Well, what happened? The thing is that uh, you know if if uh, Mike, if I bet a dollar of my thousand and I won, wow, how big a deal is that? Now I've got a thousand and one dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, if I bet five dollars and I win uh, one, now I have a thousand and four dollars, okay, because I put up a dollar and I got, you know, or, or what is it, a thousand, I'm sorry, a thousand and five dollars. Right. So I put up five and I, uh, I won it back plus another five. Um, that doesn't really make a dent. On the other hand, if I was to bet, you know, let's bet half. <laughs> let's bet 50%. I'm going to put up $500, okay? And if I lose, now what has happened? Well, you're down 50%. Right. I've got to double my money just to get back to where I started, mm -hmm. okay? 
So, uh, so here's the thing. What folks failed to do was know how much to bet. That's all. That's all. They just failed to know how much to bet. In a game with 100 trials, 60% of which they were guaranteed to win, you know what? If, if, if all these guys did was bet 100 bucks a play, they would have won 60 times and made $6,000. They would have lost 40 times and lost uh, $4,000. They would have taken $1,000 and turned it into $3,000. They would have, from their 1000 bucks, they would have earned 2000 and still have their 1000 to start with. So 200% return. Wow. But most folks did not do that. Here's why. The Martingale principle okay, shows us that when you begin to lose, you have a, an exponential amount gain in what you've got to get back. For example, Mike, if, if I lose 10% and then I win 10%, does that mean that I'm even? Well, unfortunately, it doesn't, Kurt. If you started off with $100,000 when you invested that money and you lost 10%, well, you'd be down to $90,000 now. When you take right. your $90,000, you reinvest it, and you make 10%. Well, now you're only at $99,000. you are still short $1,000 from your original starting point. Right. I, I lose 10%, make 10%, and now I'm behind by a grand. Not cool. And it gets worse and worse. In fact, uh, Mike, if, if I lost 50%, would I need to make 50% to get back to even? No, you've got to double what we have left, Kurt. You need to make 100% of what you have left just to get back to square one. Wow. So the Martingale principle, or it's also nicknamed Gambler's Ruin, goes like this, okay? Uh, all those red lines represent a loss. All the blue ones represent how much you need to make in order to get back to where you started. And as you see, we've got a, just kind of a linear progression of numbers here, but an exponential progression of what you've got to uh, uh, earn to get back. But you know what? Way over here to the left, this is, a, this is the first and most important principle. And, and we, I know everybody didn't come for a math lesson. You came for a trading lesson. But listen, you, you can't get away from mathematical truth, OK? Um, <laughs> there's, there's, there's only a certain number of, of uh, elements in the periodic table. There's only a certain number of colors in the spectrum. And there's only a certain uh, way in which you can have gains that outstrip your losses. And that's to pay attention to the Martingale concept. Mike, if I lose 50%, that means I need to make 100% on the next trade just yes. to get back to where I started? That's, that's hard to wrap your head around. doesn't happen that often. Right, yeah. The 100% the, the gain doesn't happen that often. The 50% loss does happen. Unfortunately, <laughs> I've <seen> yes. That. <laughs> I've seen that a few times. You've seen that in your career, okay, mm -hmm. uh, until we start to get a, get a hold of it. Uh, guys, you know what? I'm going to brag on you for a second there, Mike. Um, I'd like to use your trades as examples just to, you know, just to pick on you. <laughs> but uh, back, uh, oh, I think a couple of years ago, you were in Talisman Energy. Talisman Energy went down by 50% or more right. during the time that you were holding it, right? That's correct, sir. Right, but your loss was only 4.5%. Yes, because I had protected it uh, using the radioactive trading techniques. I was long stock the entire time. It did take a 4.5% loss, that's right, but the stock was down over 50%. Right, okay. So, uh, you know, if you had been in that stock, you know, just plain vanilla buying the stock, right, mm -hmm. you would need a 100% gain to get back to where you started. But yes. Mike, does a 5% loss mean that you need to win 10% on the next play? No, math doesn't work that way either. We can't simply divide by 10. What it works out to be, Curtis, if we suffer a 5% loss, we only need about a 5.3, actually comes out to be a 5.26% gain just to get back to break even. Very good. And you could wrap your head around that, right? I mean, that's, that's a lot easier to see. Yeah, I mean, I've seen those positions over the past couple of days. One of the collars I'm in, unfortunately, I guessed wrong. I should have traded as a married put, not a collar. Uh, I've seen that. And then uh, today, one of the other positions, we saw eBay jump up about 5% this morning after earnings. So that's that's possible. Yeah. You, oh, so you're saying that you, you've had a 5% or better gain in one of your plays, and, and you wish you'd been doing it radioactively because it would be a more than 5% gain. 
Actually, it's up 17%, but I trade it as a collar instead of a married put, so I'm going to make 3% <laughs> instead of trading Shame it as a Shame on you, put. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Should have been doing a radioactive play. <laughs> That's right. I, I know you do do about half of your account that way, though. So That's right, yes. Okay. Well, here's the deal. We just don't know what's going to happen next, so there will be strings of losses and wins. It's inevitable, okay? Uh, but uh, if you're going to have the capital to take advantage of those swings up, You've got to use a structure that's going to keep your losses down and let your winners run. For example, Mike, I just used the, exa uh, I just used the example where you had lost 4.5% in your Talisman Energy play. Right? Yes. Talisman Energy goes down 50%. You lose 4.5%. No great shakes. But later that same year, or was it earlier? It was actually earlier in the year. Er okay, earlier that same year, you had a 59.8% gain on your married put. It was both stock and a put. And, mm -hmm. uh, and we're calculating the gain based on everything that you put into it, based on what you paid for the put and what you paid for the stock. At a 59.8% gain. Now listen, everybody, if Mike had had a, uh, I'll just round off the 59.8 to 60, okay? Okay. If Mike had a 60% gain early in the year and a 50% loss on the same size capital, Later in the year, is he ahead? It sounds like you're ahead by 10%, but are you? No, I'm actually behind by around 22%. <laughs> Ouch, yeah. Because if, if you make 60%, but then you lose half of it, mm -hmm. half of your capital, not half of your 60% gain, but half of your capital that's left over, man, you're, you're behind where you started. But you weren't behind where you started. And the reason is that you allowed your upside to run right? That's right. But you, you limited your downside very, very, very well. Now, Mike, we asked this poll already. Are you happy with your 12-month performance? Mike, are you? Are you happy with your 12-month performance? Yeah, I'm happy with my 48-month performance, Kurt. I started trading radioactively <laughs> about uh, four years ago when we first got partnered up. Uh, and I've stuck with it over those last four years because it has been meeting my goals more than any other strategy. As you know, I've been trading for 10 years here at Power Options. Uh, but right. compared to those other strategies, covered calls, naked puts, calendar spreads, uh, vertical spreads, straddles even, iron condors, and so forth, I've had more long-term success and better success with the radioactive trading techniques than those other strategies. Yes. Um, I'll say that uh, Mike is the Options Education Director over at Power Options. Okay, Power Options, uh, I, I don't own Power Options. I don't even own a piece of Power Options. It's it's just a company that I'm, I'm uh, committed to... Uh, uh, helping, uh, you know, in terms of education, and, and they're committed to helping not just me, but uh, thousands of subscribers with their uh, with finding and screening picks. Okay, but Mike is almost—I would say—you're almost morally obligated to uh, do as many of those uh, trades as possible because you're in a position where you're you're uh, teaching people. Uh, about the Power Options platform and how it can be used for straddles, for straggles, for all these different types of trades. You've mm -hmm. done a lot of them. I know that there's some things that you won't do, like you won't do a short straddle. Right. I don't do the short straddles and strangles. I won't do iron butterflies, honestly. Uh, anytime I get a yeah. customer who calls up and says, well, I'm doing the all-call butterflies or the iron butterflies, I can show them how to use the tools, but at the same time I'm honest with them, as you mentioned. And I say, well, please, I don't trade because, to be honest, if you can pick where a stock's going to be trading exactly or within a $0.05 cent or $0.10 cent range within the next 30 days, you probably don't need my help. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> well, Mike, uh, in, in, uh, twice a week for the last five years and four years since you've been joining me, mm -hmm. I've, been, I've been posing this question, you know, saying, hey, what's the single most desirable solution? If I was a genie and I could only grant you one uh, wish on this uh, – deal here, what would you pick, okay? And, and almost always, it's, it's uh, controlling losses. But let me just ask the, the, today's crowd, okay? Would you like for me to um, give you a magic wand that would help you be 90% accurate at picking stocks or 90% accurate at timing trades? Or would you like to make a little bit more money than you have been when you're right or would you like to not get hurt badly when you're wrong? Because remember, <laughs> when you're wrong 10% of the time, you could still lose <laughs> what you made the other 90. Uh, 
But uh, or would you actually honestly say, you know what, there is no problems at all with my trading. I can't make any improvements anywhere, so uh, keep it to yourself. Okay. So let's leave that up there for another 10 seconds. And, and uh, Mike, then we're going to go ahead and show the solution. And not only are we going to show the solution, we're going to show how it can be applied now uh, to these um, risk-free spread trades. All right, so that's a full minute. Let me go ahead and close her off. Oops, somebody jumped in there at the last second. Because of rounding, this looks like 101% uh, because of rounding. Mm. Okay. But uh, what's the clear winner here? What, what does half of our audience want to make sure that they uh, come away with? Exactly what you projected, Kurt, that we just don't want to get hurt badly when we're wrong. Right. And then the second place winner is, uh, hey, I want to be able to pick stocks. Well, uh, I've shown in another webinar. We're not going to go through this exercise today, but I've shown in another webinar where if you were right once and you were wrong once at picking stocks, if you just played the stock, you would lose. But if you played the married put the way that I show it, you would win. <laughs> and, and it's the same stock, <laughs> right? It's the same stock. So, uh, so picking stocks is not necessarily the uh, solution, but structuring the trade is. So pretty cool. All right. So. Uh, the reason, again, that we're, you're going to have the capital to catch those runaway winners is that you haven't lost too much on your losers, okay? Just like Mike making 60% in one trade and losing four and a half in another trade, even though he should have lost half of his capital. Here's the deal. I call this force ideal size trades, and what that means is I'm going to risk a, an ideal size of the trade. Here we have Humana uh, shares, okay, and this was in March of 2011, uh, picked up at the same time, August 2011, uh, $65 put option for 580 So that makes a total invested amount of $69.70, but we've got a guaranteed exit of $65. Now, let me be really clear. Mike, if the stock wants to go to the moon, do, am I obligated to deliver it at $65? No, no. You have the control that if it drops to $1 or $2 per share, you have the guaranteed right that you can choose to close it at 65 and you'll get $65 back for the position only risking $4.70 or 6.7%. If the stock goes up to 100, you have no obligation to do anything. You can choose to liquidate the position, you could choose to make an adjustment. By buying the put, you have control, you have the rights, you're not obligated to do anything. Yeah. For example, that stock goes to $80. First of all, that $65 put option is still going to be worth something because uh, you know, there's time left to expiration, but I can get out for 80 bucks. I don't have to get out for 65. This is kind of the polar opposite of a cover call trade. Now, right. uh, Mike, I want to I want to point out two things. Number one, this four dollars and seventy cents, when we set it against the 69.70 that's in the trade, that represents only about 6.7 percent of the trade is at risk. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now. This is scalable. Depending on how big of a fish you are, you could get into more shares and contracts and still be risking only 6.7%. Now, Mike, I, I did this trade in an account with uh, over $100,000 in assets. So with over $100,000 in assets, if I'm risking a dollar amount by getting into 200 shares and two puts, if my dollar amount at risk is 940, yeah, that's 67 of the trade but it's how much of my account? Well, in your $100,000 account, this represented less than 1%. It was 0.94% of your total portfolio value. And uh, you're investing, of course, uh, this 940 at risk is against the capital invested, about 13940 uh, That still, that monetary risk, that 940 at risk, the worst case scenario in that position is on less than 1% of your total portfolio. Right. Now here I'm showing 50% of the audience that participated. I'm showing 50% saying, I just want to not get hurt too badly when I'm wrong. Let's look at the practical of that. Let's just look at the practical side. If you limited risk over the last 12 months, if you limited risk over the last 12 months, like what I just showed, about 6% of the trade and 1% of your portfolio, if you had to practice that kind of money management last year, would you... Uh, be better off, okay? So uh, one thing you could say is, you know what, I did that. I did that. I kept my losses down to 1% or less, but I still lost last year. Or you might say, I might still have lost, but you know what, I would have lost much less. 
or perhaps you lost overall last year, but taking into consideration, you know, the 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 the, the change, you know, I I, I would have won. Uh, or maybe you did win last year, but you would have done better with what I'm saying. Or maybe, maybe you might have been one of those guys that said, I'm very happy with my trading results. And, and in today's polls, today's poll, it came back 7% said that. 7% said, I was very happy with my trading results. Right now, I'll tell, you that, I'll tell everybody, I'll just let the cat out of the bag. It's more than 7%. Okay, let me go ahead and close that poll, and I'll share the results. Okay, 38% <laughs> would have said, I'm very happy with my trading results. 13% uh, said, you know what, I, I lost overall last year, but would have won if I'd have done that. And 50% said, you know what, I, I, I might still have lost, but if I did, I would have lost much less. Now, first of all, Mike, uh, Everybody that answered this poll, are they better off? Yes. That's the knowledge that I've shown so far. The, everybody, right? Everybody, everybody that, that answered, answer. yeah. Yeah. Nobody in the audience volunteered saying, you know what, I did that and I still lost money last year. Hmm, how about that? Now, folks, we've got 67 people on the line. Out of 67 people, plus Mike and me on the line, if we look back over the last 12 months, <laughs> nobody has said, you know what, I practice that kind of money management and I still ended up behind. Nobody said that. That tells me something. It tells me that we got a winner on our hands, okay, if we if we begin to practice money management like that. Last 12 months, no loss over 6% of the trade or 1% of the portfolio. Everybody that answered that poll would have been better off uh, doing that, okay? And it's like this. You cut your losers short and let your winners run. Now, Mike, does the strategy of selling covered calls or selling naked puts go well with that idea? Cut your losers short, let your winners run? Well, it doesn't go well with that idea at all, does it, Kurt? It's kind of the opposite. What about spreads, uh, the, 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 the traditional way? Butterflies well, and condors, vertical spreads, does, does that fly? Well, you do know up front when you get into a spread position what your maximum risk is. So in a sense, you could defend it and say you're cutting your losers short if it goes yeah. against you. Well, you're not letting your winners run either. And in fact, most of those vertical spreads, as we know, Kurt, when they're set up uh, looking for the higher probability, a 75 or 80% probability of success, you're looking at a risk to reward ratio of 10 to 1 or 9 to 1, and that's really difficult to maintain. That's right. What Mike's talking about is, man, if, if you take 50 cents when you're right, but you lose $4.50 when you're wrong, <laughs> that's a bad scene when you're wrong. Yeah. You know, it wipes out all of your previous gains. So I got this crazy idea that limiting the downside to start and then leaving the upside open was a way to go. But that's not where it ends. Okay? That's only where it begins. So far, I have not been proved wrong on this manage your money thing. I have not been proven wrong on this managing your risk thing. Okay? But here's the deal. We get these riskless spread trades. Okay, and we're going to use them to take back the edge. All right, adjustments done by way of nested spread trades. I call them income methods because uh, out of the 11 methods, only one of them is done into debit. It's done into debit but guarantees a higher return. Okay, but the other 10 are done at a credit. The other 10 put money in your pocket that's spendable now. And uh, we're going to show one of them right now. Okay, so we've got Humana. Let's go back to that same trade where we're uh, buying stock and also buying a put option to keep ourselves out of trouble. We've got a total amount at risk of 470 or 6.7% of our underlying uh, investment. We've already done our scalable, uh, scaling. So no matter how big a fish you are, no matter how many shares you pick up, if you get 100 shares, you pick up one contract. If you pick up 200 shares, two contracts, 1,000 shares, 10 contracts, you still only have 6.7% of your capital in that trade at risk. Man, it sounds like a wolf howling out here. Do you hear me? Do you hear uh, that? I can that hear one? something out there, yeah. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> Not cool. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad I'm safe inside the cabin here. <laughs> All right, so now we've got... Um, uh, the Mary Put setup, we're looking at that. And now uh, we're risking 940 in that play. Now let's look at a bear call spread on Humana. 
where we would sell to open two 67 and a half calls and buy two uh, April $70 calls. Okay, this would generate a credit of 50 cents. And if we were doing it times two contracts, that would be 100 bucks, right? That's right, yeah. We'd have 50 cents net credit with two contracts. We'd receive $100 into our account for this particular trade, Kurt. That's right. What about the dark side? You know, we, we get paid $100. Right here it says the total cost is a, a negative $100, which means we get paid $100 to get into this position. Mm -hmm. well, what's the dark side of this whole transaction? Well, as you mentioned, Kurt, the dark side now is if the stock goes up. This is a bear call spread. We want the stock to stay the same or move down in price below our short option. If it goes above 70, we're going to have to pay 250 to close this spread, but times two contracts, that would be $500. But we keep our 100, so we're risking $400 here to make 100. Ouch. Okay, so if we're right, well, if we're right four times and wrong once, uh, we break even. Yes. Right. Uh, if we're right five times and wrong once, then we'd be ahead by 100 bucks. So I guess what we need to do is, is be right on this a lot more often than we're wrong so that we stay ahead. That's right. Yeah. But uh, here's, here's something that I want to point out. All this red is represented by the fact that we don't have stock on hand to deliver. What if we did? If we did have stock at a lower cost basis than the 67.50, mm -hmm. would any of this exist? Would any of that red exist? In no, because our no, it wouldn't, Kurt, because our obligation would be covered by the long stock position. Oh, okay, all right. So let's uh, let's explore that a little further. Okay, we had in our radioactive profit machine, which is you know a, a married put put together the way the blueprint shows. Okay, the blueprint's my book. Okay, the blueprint shows how to put together this uh, married put that I call a radioactive profit machine. And it's got $940 at risk, and the put is protecting it all the way till August. It's March now, okay? Well, it's not March now, but <laughs> in the example, it's March, okay? And the income method number six, or bear call spread, times two contracts has $400 at risk. Now that collapses at April. In April, this is gonna be over and done with, uh, whether it uh, whether it ends up costing me money or whether it ends up you know ahead of the game and winning me money, but no matter what, it's going to be done in April, so I could do it again. Okay, all right. So what do you figure the total risk picture is with the 940 at risk in the married put and the 400 risk in the bear call spread? Hello. If we just add everything together. We'd be looking uh -huh. at a risk of uh, thirteen forty. Yeah, that's that's what most folks uh, look at here. They say, well, you know, you've got this much risk and you've got that much risk, so it must equal a total of the two. No, that's not how it goes. We're picking up a hundred dollars here, and that pulls away from the cost basis on the stock here. That makes our married put eight forty at risk instead of nine forty at risk. Uh -huh. And oh, by the way, because we own stock. That nullifies completely the risk that's in the bear call spread. There is zero risk to doing a bear call spread in this context when you do it in this structure. That's exciting, okay? It's really exciting. The bear call spread, if it ends up that uh, the stock goes up to 70, okay? Mm -hmm. that's, that's what it would take for that bear call spread to cost me the maximum $400. Well, if it does that... Uh, Dude, I own the stock. You know, the, the stock uh, that I've got in pocket uh, is going to more than cancel that loss. And here's how the, the, the uh, I, I needed Power Option software to actually illustrate this to people. I, I mean, I knew it before. I was practicing this for years before I found the Power Options platform and, uh, and, and the custom spread trade tool. Um, but if you look here, now we've got all four legs represented. We've got the stock ownership, we've got the put option protecting it, and we've got the bear call spread. The bear call spread causes this little bump. Mike, here's the worst possible case of that bear call spread. The bear call, the the uh, where we sold the seven, the 67.50s and we bought the 70s. Right. The worst case scenario is if it goes to 70 bucks. Well, geez, that means we've lost 400 dollars, right? Correct. Yeah. Right. 
But in the case of already owning the stock, it means we have to deliver the stock at this price. And uh, as, this, as the um, underlying keeps going up, we're losing money on the put at first. But then we've got these $70 calls that we've been, well, we've been paid to own, right? And, and uh, uh, as, this, as the underlying continues up, we still have an infinite upside potential. The bear call spread, if it closes against me, well, the rise in the stock more than covers my loss. I can't lose without winning. Mm -hmm. That's really exciting. That's really exciting. Okay. Again, we've got a 6.1% risk now instead of 67 We still have the uh, unlimited upside. We have 840 risk now instead of uh, 940 And again, unlimited upside. So uh, the bear call spread done correctly, you know, done according to the dictates uh, that, that, that are set forth in the blueprint, it introduces no risk even though it takes a credit. It's nested within the merry put. Mike, could that stock keep going up and it would be all right? Well, yes, because you haven't capped your upside with this particular play. Even if you do get assigned early on the short call, well, you still have that long call in place that's generating profits for you. Remember, technically, you receive that long call at a credit. Right. Right now, uh, Mike, I'm going to send uh, a link to, to the audience Okay, with the chat bar. I'm going to send a link to Power Options. It's www.powerop.com and forward slash RAT for uh, two free weeks of power options on me. And I, I would love for you to go and check this out. <laughs> I'd love for you to uh, just uh, give power options a spin and, and, and check out the kind of uh, play that I just showed you and, and, and try it on a couple of different stocks. Okay? All right. So, uh, Mike. Uh, this is the deal, okay, uh, in this particular play here. We've taken the bear call spread, and we've taken all the risk out of it. Now, I'm just going to ask everybody, what do you think of that? What do you, I mean, what do you think of that? Uh, what do you think of spread trades that take income, risk nothing if they go against, right, and still leave the upside open uh, in your particular stock that you might be playing? Does this hedge beat covered calls? Right? Covered call, the, would covered calls uh, give you the, the measure of protection that this play would, Mike? Absolutely not. Um, we had one of our attendees just uh, post in a little bit to check out Google. I mean, that dropped about, uh, it's declining between 7 and 10% right now due to uh, a leak of the earnings, I guess. Um, but if we were in a covered call, okay, we may have generated our 2, 2.5, 3% premium, but the stock's down 10%, we're still losing 7%. Right. On With the, the married put, hand. the most we could lose, uh -huh. of course, is 5 6 or 7%, depending on how we set it up. And that's in the absolute worst case scenario. If the stock continues to fall, the covered call trader is going to continue to lose more. And we're going to be at a point where we can decide, okay, we can close this position now, or maybe we can readjust it, but we're still only risking single digits. Right. You know, uh, I'd like to point something else out too, folks. Uh, we're showing getting into all four legs simultaneously. That's what I did with Humana, was get into all four legs simultaneously. Uh, you know, buy the stock, buy the put, uh, sell short a call, buy a long call, all four legs. But it's possible if you already own a stock, and I want everybody that's owning a stock right now to perk up and listen, it's possible if you own a stock, for you to retain the unlimited upside potential of ownership of that stock, but at the same time, buy an insurance policy and pay for it with your income method. I've actually taken, I had a fellow that had McDonald's shares that were, you know, like 40 bucks above where he got it. Mm -hmm. so I, told, I, I showed him how to get paid to have an insurance policy. It's called bulletproofing. What he did was lock in the gains that he had already made and yet still be able to hold on for a further upside. So if the stock goes down, hey, you know, it, it protects him a heck of a lot better than a stop order would. And he's able to do this income method six play again and again and again. So let me go ahead and share this. Uh, 
33% uh, said beats the shiitake mushrooms out of covered calls. 25% want to say, hey, can I do that in my IRA? And 58% say, whoa, I didn't know you could do that. You got any more? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Uh, I've got, uh, well, we've got 11 total. So, uh, Mike, I did say that we'd pause for questions, so let's pause and take a couple of questions now. Oh, okay. And, uh, then I'll show a second, uh, gosh, maybe a second and a third this was spread trade. Okay, well, uh, Zaya says, I don't understand how the 6.1% is calculated compared to the 840 risk. Okay, well, Zaya, there are 200 shares of stock purchased for Humana. There were two put options, okay? Uh, there was the bear call spread open as well. The total I'll risk... that slide. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, the, the worst case scenario, if the stock dropped to $0 per share, you see here the risk is at 840 total investment of the 200 shares plus the two puts minus the uh, spread premium is uh, 13,832. So I take 840. If the stock drops to zero dollars per share, we'd lose 840. But 840 divided by 13,832 comes out to be 6.07 or let's round it to 6.1 percent. That's the maximum risk. And again, that maximum risk Kurt is defined as if the stock dropped all the way down to something along the lines of $10 per share, $5 per share, $1 per share. That's the risk. The worst we can lose is $840 on an investment of $13,832. That's the That's risk. Right. Okay, now That's real right. quick, got another question here. Oh, ah, I had this question last week, or last, last one, I'm sorry, I got to answer that. There's a couple questions that came in. Levi wanted to know, can deep in the money leaps be used and substituted for stock? Levi, no, we don't advise it, and there's a reason why. These in the money long strangles that we get asked about often enough, I have a couple white papers, I'm probably going to do another one because it comes up so frequently. You're asking the right questions, don't get me wrong. But the problem is with that scenario, your percentage at risk is too high against your investment because it's a leveraged position. But the other problem, Levi, is that what ends up happening is that in normal market conditions, that in the money long strangle because you're delta opposed, you know, as the stock moves up one point, you gain 60 cents or 70 cents or 80 cents on the call, but you lose 70 or 80 cents on the put. You're delta opposed. You're not making any profit. So in normal market conditions where the married put is showing a profit just by liquidating, you're still at a loss on that in the money long strangle. What I'm going to do, Levi, is I'm going to send you those two white papers. Um, cool. Oh, okay, David. I would love to do this, but this is a different topic. This is something that uh, you know. Usually, I put together with these white papers. We'd love to do it. We don't have the slides prepared. We've only got seven minutes. David asks great question, a right question. Uh, I believe David is a blueprint owner, but what he's asking is, can you show the difference between the trade show, meaning Humana, and what the gain would have been at various price points without the spread? Wouldn't the gain have been larger at seventy-two or seventy-five without the spread? Well, sure. It probably would have, especially as you go higher, because if you don't do an income, and this is something I have, uh, Kurt, you've heard me in conversations before, this is hard to yeah. impress upon some investors when they're looking at the radioactive trading techniques. They want to jump right in and sell the call right away or do this income method number six right. Can I do it from the beginning? Yeah, but if your expectation was that the stock was going to move up 5 to 8% to begin with, you're going to be better off allowing that move to happen and then doing an income method. But is there a trade-off with each income method? Absolutely. There's a slight trade-off with each one, and that's what Kurt discusses with what's called the SEGA model for every income method in the blueprint uh, so that you can uh, decide how to do with that. One last question, Kurt, just want to cover real quick. And David, I'll address yours later, your question later on via email after the presentation sometime this afternoon. You want to get a moment? Um, oh, Yatish wants to know, once I purchase, this is more of a, a purchase question, but I'll get it out of the way now, Kurt, in case we have more questions later. Um, once he purchases the blueprint, is he able to download the PDF rather than wait for the mail? Unfortunately, no. Right now, we're only offering the blueprint as a uh, <clears throat> written document, the full text document. It's not available as a PDF download uh, once it's purchased. Right, right. I'd like to address the, uh, uh, who was it that asked about income method six? Uh, uh, would you have done better without doing the income method if the stock goes up? That was David. Uh, was it that, asked? that was David. Okay. David, you're going to really like the next income method that I show. Uh, or, or one of the next two, because I'm going to show two. Um, you're going to like it a lot because it actually collects more money because the stock goes up, and you're long the stock. You're long the stock. You do this income method. It helps you to do what I call double dip. <laughs> it 
you actually get paid twice on this particular income method. And I think it's why a lot of folks that uh, open up the email and, and uh, decide to come today, I think this is what they came for. So uh, shall we proceed? Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, cool. Well, so uh, here we are. We already used the uh, example of how to set up a Mary put and so forth. What I'd like to do is I'd like to show uh, bulletproofing a stock. And then after bulletproofing, uh, we're, we're going to show how to uh, do a, a spread trade that may pay you twice. Okay? Oh, uh, by the way, I'd like to call the, uh, uh, I'd like to say that uh, income method number six is give me my money now. <laughs> and it, it takes away the market maker's edge because the bid ask spread that he sticks you with, well, shoot, we're taking a 50 cent credit per spread on that one, right? And as we do, uh, we can't get hurt. If the spread goes against us, we still profit. Okay, and and you can use this repetitively to take out all risk. In fact, let's see what would have happened if that stock went up. And normally, Mike, if you did this play, if you sold a lower strike price put and simultaneously bought a higher strike price put, what would you call that? Well, that would be if it had the same expiration, Kurt. I'd call that a bear put debit spread. Right. It's a bear put spread. You pay to do it, okay? And there is risk with it, okay? But uh, take a look. Some folks object to spending money on the put, but what if you could use your put as a dynamic hedge? There's no risk to that bear put spread when it's in the context of the married put, okay? So let's say that we had bought the August uh, $70 put option for $690 and simultaneously sell the August 65 put for $410. Well, that makes a debit of $2.80. But if we're doing this in the context of the stock that we own, if we do this in the context of the stock that we own uh, already and, and having already bought the $65 put, well, what we're doing is raising the strike price by $5 and paying $2.80 to do it. Here's the custom spread tool in Power Options. I'm going to go back to the Humana example. The, the last two lines here show the original pricing. I got into Humana at 63.90 and bought two contracts of the uh, $65 put for 580, right? Now up here you'll see the $65 put again. I'm selling it. Why am I selling it for less than what I got it for earlier? Well, the stock must have moved up in price. You can see right above that. It shows a price there of $70.72. So your stock moved up, so the put's going to come down. Right. And so what I'm doing here is selling that put and simultaneously buying a put that's higher up. Look what just happened. There had been 940 at risk. Now there's 500 at risk. There had been 6.7 at risk. Now there's 3.4 at risk. That's the, uh, we call it income method number four. And if you do that enough times, it bulletproofs. Take a look. We've got 6.7% at risk here. Yes. Do this put adjustment, and now we've got 3.4% at risk. Kind of cool. Now, if we add our bear call spread back in, okay, because you could have done this, well, looky. <laughs> We're taking our risk down to 410 or 2.8%. We still have the unlimited upside potential, all right? And it, it just shows that uh, you're not limited to doing only one income method. There's a number of different things that you can do here to continue reducing risk. And it's possible to reduce the risk so that there's no risk at all. Uh, you do this bear call spread a, a second time, for example, in April. And guess what? You could uh, bulletproof yourself. What happened, in fact, was my uh, stock uh, uh, did go up, and so I ended up taking a taking a profit. It went up above $70. So the income methods reduce the gap between the so-called break-even line mm -hmm. and the strike price that protects so that there's less and less at risk. And if, if you reduce that gap to less than zero, that's not always possible, but it's very often possible. Mike, during the flash crash of uh, uh, May 6, 2010, you had bulletproof positions, didn't you? Yeah, and some with a low risk of uh, less than 1% or right around 1% as well. Yeah, you had like a 1% risk, a 2% risk in some of your plays, and you had less than 0% risk 
in some of your other plays. And so when the flash crash happened, you're like, eh, okay, yawn, let me have another bagel, you know, no big deal. And that was the other advantage is that it wasn't a stop order or a trailing stop where I moved up and the flash crash happened and I was instantaneously out of the stock uh, at that time for only that, you know, 1% gain or whatever it was. I had the choice to sit there and say, well, if this comes out to be real, if this is uh, real, if this is an actual event, I know exactly where I stand. But if it's something that's uh, as it was and then the market comes back up a little bit later or things correct themselves a little bit later, I didn't get stopped out and then have to, you know, go back in at a, at a price that was higher than what I'd originally paid or anything of that nature. Right. Mike, I'm going to skip questions right now because we're right at the hour. And mm -hmm. I, say I was going to show this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, spread trade that could pay you twice, okay? Uh, uh, there are a couple of uh, instances in our past, uh, uh, one of my plays, one of your plays, one of my client's plays, where we were able to lock in a gain, uh, but also uh, leave the upside open. <laughs> lock in a gain and leave the upside open. <laughs> Did <Right>. you get that? <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, let's go ahead and, and check out this final one, double dipping. Okay. All right, so uh, here's another one. Once you bulletproof a stock, there's many ways. You could end it, okay? Uh, you could hold it. Nobody says you have to do anything. I mean, when, when you've got a bulletproof stock, when your strike price for your stock is higher than the combined uh, cost basis for your stock and put, man, uh, you're, sitting, you're sitting pretty, okay? But you can play it with further income methods. Uh, okay, somebody just poked in and said there's no sound. I'm not having any Everybody issues, Kurt. I'm not having any issues. I wonder if uh, Zai there is just Zaya? having a small uh, broadband. David says it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Good. Okay. All right. So that might be that individual's uh, computer. So, um, well, let's go ahead and play it further with the other income methods. We're going to do another risk-free net nest and spread trade uh, right after a bulletproofing move. Okay. So uh, here's the fact: I had uh, 200 shares of Lulu and two June. Uh, $80 puts at a total cost basis of 85.19. Now, if we look at that, uh, um, that uh, that's 5.19 times 200 is $1,038 that I had at risk, but I decided I didn't want to have any risk. And after the stock moved up a little bit, what I did was the bear put spread that I just talked about, where you uh, buy to open the 90s and sell to close the 80s. Some folks would argue and say that's not a bear put spread because you already own the 80s. Well, okay, that's fine. But in my uh, spread platform, on you can uh, enter it as a spread. spread. Yeah. Yeah. It, it treats it as a spread. Okay. So here's the deal. It cost me five dollars to make this adjustment, but it raised my payout by ten dollars. Okay. And so we took uh, the uh, the original married put play that had. 6% at risk and made it, um, you know, here it is, 6.1% risk, $1,038. And we raised the uh, payout by 10 bucks and paid five to do it, uh, times 200 shares. We end up with $38 at risk out of $18,038, or less than uh, 1%. Okay, so you don't even see where it could lose down here, right? Is this more or less bulletproof, Mike? Yeah, I mean, this is the worst case scenario. If you still hold it all the way to June expiration, we can assume that the even if the stock went up another 10 points or 12 points, your put would still be worth 50 cents or something along those lines. So we're we're pretty much there. Yeah, it's it's pretty much uh, bulletproof. Now, here's the uh, riskless nested spread that I call the money net. Okay, so it takes the credit to do it in the first place, and there's three different ways. We're not going to explore all three. That's why I wrote a book, guys, okay? But there's three different ways that it can bring in more later and incur no risk to capital. By the way, try that power options uh, to, tr to check this. Income method number five is where you buy one call and sell two. It's a ratio call spread, and here's what I'm doing. The April 90 calls were selling at 290. The April... Um, $85 calls were available for uh, 560 on the ask. So here's what happened. I sold two, two uh, what are they, $90 calls at $290 apiece. That generates 580 Got it so far? So far, using sir. That, mm -hmm. Yep. Using that premium, I bought an $85 call. 
Now, I've taken a net credit of 20 cents. Now, Mike, what's normally the problem with a racial call spread? Oh, infinite <laughs> risk to the upside, sir. Infinite risk to the upside because I've got a naked call. I've got one uh, long call and two short, okay? One long call but two short, and that's what makes for this infinite unlimited upside risk. If the, if the stock goes high enough, uh, I could be bankrupt, all right? And that's not a happy thing. But what can we do to take away this risk? Well, we have to have something to cover that extra short call, don't we? Yeah. If you owned 100 shares of stock, that would go away. There would be no risk. If I own 200 shares of stock, not only does it go away, but I've also still got my unlimited upside. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. The spread itself pays 20 cents for me to get into, or $20 on the front end. Mm -hmm. Mike, if the stock closes at $90, now the $90 calls expire worthless, but what about that $85 call? Well, it's going to have some intrinsic value, isn't it, Kurt? No, it's going to be worth something. As the stock goes sideways, if it goes sideways, I did this when the stock was at $88.15. If it goes sideways, the 90s will expire and the 85 will be worth $3.15, and I got paid to own it. I got paid $0.20 cents to own it. So it would be a better return right then than a covered call. Right. Uh, it could end up being even more anywhere in this zone from $85.20 to $94.80. Anywhere between there, I get paid a second time. That's exciting. Okay. So the maximum profit is we could pick up 520 extra dollars. Okay. All right. Now. So here's an interesting situation there, Mike. Because I did this in the context of owning 200 shares of stock, it's like I bought a bull call spread, right, with the one uh, long call and one of the short 90 calls, right, and I used the other $90 call to finance it. Does that make sense? Yeah, we could break this down into a view of a covered call or a collar spread with one bull call spread that was received at a small credit. What if I buy to close this covered call only? That would well, then you down. still have the married put in place and a bull call spread. Yes, I'd have the married put plus a bull call spread in place. Well, Mike, that's what I did. You know why? Because the stock went to $93 a share. Okay. And because I didn't want to have it called away, I bought to close one $90 call for three fifty. Now, that doesn't look very good because I'm spending three fifty to stay in the stock. Mm -hmm. But then again, the stock did go up five five dollars. Remember, it was uh, eighty eight fifteen. Right. When I did this play, and now it's at ninety three dollars and change. Well, earlier uh, before expiration happened, earlier in the day, on expiration Friday, I bought the ninety dollar call for three fifty. I had been paid twenty cents to get into this uh, racial call spread in the first place, right? That's right. You kept that twenty cent credit from the original spread placement. Okay, so it's like I've spent three thirty to stay in a stock that's gone up by five dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay, but let's not forget, I still have the eighty-five slash ninety dollar bull call spread in place. That's now both legs are in the money. Yes. So not only do I get the $5 of capital appreciation in the stock, I also get $5 from this bull call spread that's going to close in the money. I mean, Lulu's over $93 a share. Am I going to uh, realize this game? More than likely, yes. Yeah, well, I did. <laughs> uh, the stock closed on, uh, on expiration Friday uh, well above $93 a share. And uh, so in the middle of the night, my broker buys the uh, uh, Lulu at $85 and delivers it at 90 putting another 5 bucks in my account. So mm -hmm. I've spent a total of 330 on my management. I've made $5 on this bull call spread. That's a buck 70 that I get to keep plus the $5 appreciation in the stock. It's like I got paid to get out of this trade kind of cool. All right. Now, if uh, if that had been just a plain old uh, covered, plain call. Vanilla covered call, 
right? I would have had to pay to stay in. So Lulu shares were trading at 88 and change when I showed the fission subscribers income method number five. Took in 20 cents credit on the front end. Oops. When Lulu goes up, I buy to close the calls, but I, I uh, also get paid on the bear call spread. Okay. Just one more reminder of what's happened. So I've gotten paid a buck seventy. Mike, if I had done a covered call play, I would have gotten what two ninety. Two ninety up front for the selling the ninety call. Yeah. And, and then I'd have to pay three fifty later. So it's like mm -hmm. I'd I'd have to pay out sixty cents to stay in and and realize that capital gain. But instead, I got paid a buck seventy to realize that capital gain. That's the magic of the money net. So, uh, Mike, uh, I'm going to do a final poll, and, and then we'll just uh, end her. Okay? Uh, let's see here. Uh, if every spread trade that you did was heads I win, tails I win more, would you like that? <laughs> would that go along with your uh, investing philosophy? And uh, then we're going to show a, a graph of what it looks like in power options, okay? Now, I, I, honestly, Mike, we do have a couple of folks being wise guys, you know, and saying, yeah, I like risk to be higher than reward. But uh, for the most part, folks are pretty pleased with this idea of uh, getting paid and then getting paid again, perhaps. So, whoops. Okay, at one point it was 93 slash 7. Uh, right now it's 85 slash 15. But, you know, again, it's... These are wise guys. Of course, we want to have spread trades that uh, that uh, pay off so well. Okay. All right. So here's what the uh, graph actually looked like. Okay. After bulletproofing Lulu with income method four, this uh, uh, zone in here. Do you see the accelerated growth? Yeah, between 85 and 90. It's truncated a little bit, but that's between 85 and 90. Yeah, because we had 200 shares long, two calls short and one call long, we ended up still having an unlimited upside potential and no downside at all because of the uh, put options that uh, had essentially been paid for, okay? So this period of sharp upturn shows the uh, stock growing even more during the period uh, during which we had uh, done the income method number five play. Kind of cool, okay? All right. So uh, I wanted to show how to get the blueprint, and uh, we're, we're going to go ahead and close. We have answered a few questions. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's any super relevant questions that we can answer in just a second or two, we'll do that. But uh, uh, for the most part, uh, if, you'll, if you'll submit your questions by email, we'd, we'd be really happy to get that. Okay. Really of course, yeah. Why. I wanted to give the uh, special offer. It's uh, $3,500 for the seminar and $6,000 for the seminar upgrade, uh, and I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. The, the blueprint is actually $350, okay? Uh, we've got the home study kit, which includes the blueprint for easy reference, but also uh, the CDs, which explain all the income methods in a multimedia format, like what we're doing here. You know, it's sound plus video. Um, and, 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 of course, you can go back to the blueprint and, uh, and reread. So if you learn better by way of this multimedia format, I would say that the home study kit is the best way to go. And if you're more of a technical person that uh, gets everything that they need to out of uh, reading material, then I would say the blueprint is a better value for you. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have a special offer. Uh, the special offer, hang on, let me run one uh, poll here real quick. Uh, and the reason I'm doing that is just to, oh, just to give us a moment so I can switch over to a different slide here. The Iridium special offer. There we go. Okay. All right. We're going to show uh, something in a minute here, but Arjun did ask a question. Kurt was getting getting to this uh, a little bit behind, 10 minutes over. We're getting to it. Arjun wanted to know, do you have a paid subscriber service where you give these type of trades? Yes. Blueprint owners. Uh, or anyone can, but uh, Blueprint owners, if you pick up the Blueprint, you'll get a special offer <coughs> where you can subscribe to the Fusion service at RadioactiveTrading.com. What you get with the Fusion service is you get a, uh, 
a listing of several lessons that Curtis created to help you absorb and master the tier materials, I really should say. But you can also look at uh, the Fusion Trades and uh, the past ones and the current ones as well. And uh, Ernie Zarenner's trades, the president and founder of Power Options, he also shows his trades in the Ernie at Power Up portfolio. So you can look at those trades. Now, if you're a self-directed investor, that's what Kurt shared with you earlier, that link to powerup.com slash RAT for that 14-day free trial. That's designed for those of you that, uh, you know, rather than looking at the trades that Kurt or Ernie has done, where you can search for the radioactive positions that match your specific criteria and uh, then further research and analyze those positions and track and manage those positions. So it's designed more, Power Options is more self-directed, but the Fusion service does allow you to follow those trades plus uh, a lot of other tools to help you with your uh, married put trading as well. Very good. Mike, I sent to everybody, I sent that link for two-week trial of Power yeah. Options. And I'd mm -hmm. still like for everybody to take advantage of that, whether you do radioactive trading or not, whether you do, you know, it supports 23 different strategies and it's the best search platform that's available. Uh, not just search, but evaluation platform. It's, it's, it's the coolest. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, for folks that, that pick up the blueprint today or the home study kits, all right, uh, in addition to the two free weeks, uh, they will give you a free month as well. Okay, so, so two free weeks are available for nothing if you want to click on that, on that uh, link that I sent you. And uh, you can get a, another free month on top of that by picking up the blueprints and or the home study kit. Okay, Here's something else that comes with the blueprint and the home study kit, the quick start guide. Uh, it's normally $50. This, this uh, guide will guide you from uh, doing uh, uh, plain vanilla stock ownership or spread trades or uh, uh, cover call trades into uh, how to very quickly wrap your head around and, and begin uh, protecting your stock to the single digit level um, and uh, for some of you that already own stock that's up from where you bought it uh, you might be able to be bulletproofed immediately so that's that's exciting um, so there's the quick start guide uh, the foundation is of radioactive trading CD normally sells for $89 we're including it free with the blueprint purchase uh, in the home study kit, the foundation of radioactive trading CD comes with it. So uh, instead of the uh, free CD, we'll give you a free consultation. Okay, so if you're picking up the uh, home study kit and you want to help, uh, you you want some help in mapping out your trading plan to meet your goals. Listen, I'm not a um, uh, a, a make you broker. <laughs> I'm not a financial advisor, but I can certainly tell you how I would trade your account, uh, it, you know, according to what goals that you have, okay? And I can help you uh, come up with a trading plan that fits your personality and uh, capital level and needs, okay? Uh, so that's, uh, that's what's available here today. Uh, if you've got a postcard that says Iridium on it, this is what this was all about. And if you didn't get a postcard but you're here today on this webinar, whether you got the postcard or whether you didn't, uh, you are cleared if you go and place your order at radioactivetrading.com. I don't think there's a, a place for you to enter the word Iridium yet. I don't think that's happened yet. But uh, I will say that uh, if you're hearing my voice, you have got that, even though it's not advertised. Even though when you go to radioactivetrading.com, it doesn't talk about those bonuses, okay, uh, everyone that's on this webinar is going to get it. Okay, and if you're listening to a recording of this webinar, well, um, I would recommend uh, sending your name and address to us so that we can uh, uh, include you with that. Send it to support at radioactivetrading.com, and we'll make sure that you're part of that Iridium offer. Okay, uh, Mike, uh, that's pretty much it. Did, uh, let's go ahead and, and close her up. Okay. And uh, I am... Very happy to have seen you today again. And uh, folks, uh, we'll be back on Tuesday probably doing a different uh, pair of trades. And uh, recommend that you go to the uh, blog and, and check that out too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mike, anything to add, subtract? Divide no, I follow? think we're good. And uh, we'll get ready for expiration tomorrow, and we'll see you all next week. Payday. <laughs> all right, very good. See you out there, everyone. Happy trading. Bye for now.